Grace, let's bring in our next guest, who is at the AMD event as well. Joining us, Dan Newman, CEO of Futurum Group. Um, so the, the total addressable market, bigger, in a way that's not a, su a surprise because we've seen that reflected in the stocks of NVIDIA and AMD this year. I guess the question is partly supply and how much of a share of the market AMD is going to be able to get as we head into 24. Yeah, John, it's a very exciting moment. AMD has been building up to this for a couple of years. And so the fact that they were able to show really competitive products with NVIDIA it should have been expected. The multi-billion dollar opportunity that Lisa Sue has been referring to over the past few quarters may not surprise anyone, but seeing the biggest companies in the world, uh, Meta, Microsoft, up on stage, talking about how they plan to collaborate more closely with AMD is a really big deal. And this isn't a zero-sum game, John. The idea is it's not just about NVIDIA. It's about having multiple options. It's about having choice. We saw the IBM Meta AI Alliance announced yesterday. The world wants to have more options when it comes to processing. It wants more options when it comes to open source and development because the AI journey is really in its earliest stages. Yeah, you know, I wonder if investors should think about the breakdown in AI chips, the way we've looked at graphics chips in consumer PCs in the past, right? Because we saw um, AWS and Microsoft both say they've got their own AI accelerators. Are those kind of like integrated graphics back in the day? So, yeah, they can do the job to do some basics, but they're not going to run the latest and greatest games. These accelerator chips from NVIDIA, from AMD that are coming out are really the big horsepower in the accelerators race? I don't necessarily think that's how it's going to end up, John. I think that these cloud hyperscalers are looking at being able to really offer a very competitive uh, piece of silicon. You look last week at AWS, the new Tranium 2 chip, you talked about trillion parameter models that could be trained on it. There's some really good economics. And we heard Lisa talk about economics. I mean, this is going to be a big part of the conversation is how efficient can we train these models. But you also look at Microsoft is coming to market. You know, they are in their infancy. And of course, Google today with its Gemini announcement, uh, TPU 5, uh, the new version of it that's going to train its newest multimodal model. So I actually think that we are seeing a new uh, era for the semiconductor space. And there will be a lot of collaboration between the big chip makers in Intel and AMD and NVIDIA and all these hyperscalers and OEMs. Having said that, though, they're vertically integrating. And we've seen it be successful at Apple in their business. And we're going to see it be successful at AWS and Microsoft as well. Christina, I just want to go back to kind of what's been going on regulatory-wise, where Gina Raimondo reportedly has been very tough, maybe without quite naming them on NVIDIA or companies who are kind of really getting around any restrictions the U.S. is trying to impose on these, sending these, these chips to China. How do we expect NVIDIA, AMD to continue? To, is it an opportunity for AMD to maybe be friendlier? Do they both need to just be super clever here to keep as big a market share as possible? Um, just how much is that a factor as we look at some of their forward sales projections? It's more of a factor for NVIDIA, given that they get roughly 20 to 25 percent of their data center revenue from China. That's why NVIDIA was very quick to create a workaround chip for China, and that's where that threat came from Gina Raimondo. However, having said that, NVIDIA knows that they're not going to get that chip blocked just right away. The government has to follow a protocol. Uh, Jensen Wong took to the stage in Singapore early, early this morning, saying that they are working closely with the U.S. government. So uh, going forward, I can only assume there's going to be more restrictions for a lot of these chips. So companies need to be cautious and maybe start pivoting their attention elsewhere. So AMD, we're not expecting any comments specifically about China on stage. That's just because their market is smaller than NVIDIA's. However, NVIDIA did say that there would be a significant uh, impact in their Q4 revenue. So that's something to keep of note for NVIDIA. But uh, Daniel brought up a really interesting point, too, just about the market share. I think the big conversation here today is the fact that the market is still really big. NVIDIA has a strong stronghold right now. AMD is slowly coming in. There's still room for both players. So for investors, they're looking like, which stock should I buy? There's still an opportunity, especially because AMD would play more in the inferencing world of the large language model. But in the future, that's where I get a little concerned when you have all of this competition from the hyperscalers coming in.